I'm standing on the site of what was once what the Americans called Prophet's Town, or what the locals called Tippy Canoe. Now, this was supposed to be the capital of a grand confederacy of Native American nations. Uh, there's a problem with that, though. Uh, that problem is unity. You have all these American immigrants flowing west, farmers. You have uh, the state and federal government buying all this land. Of course, they're dealing with individual nations, individual American Indian nations every time for these land purchases. Dealing with Indian nations individually allows them to be overpowered individually. And so there are those, and particularly one who I'll talk about in a minute, who say the only way we're going to withstand all of this, this onslaught of immigration, the only way we're going to keep our lands and our traditions and possibly win back some of our lands is to unite. Now this is a uh, historically almost impossible proposition. This isn't the first time someone's come along and tried to unite uh, the various American Indian nations, but there's almost no historical precedent for it succeeding on any significant scale. Two brothers, Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa, they're the ones who founded Prophet's Town, or Tippy Canoe. Uh, Tecumseh was the warrior, he was the older brother. These are Shawnee. Uh, he was a warrior, he'd, he'd proven himself in battle many times, starting as early as the 1790s at least. Uh, this guy was a force to be reckoned with. He was shrewd, he was intelligent, always impressed people who met him. That's Tecumseh. But he has this younger brother, and the younger brother's kind of the opposite in every way. He's never proven himself athletically. He was never inclined to such things as a kid. In fact, he lost his eye notching an arrow, supposedly. Uh, always wore an eye patch. This guy was the opposite. He'd never proven himself in battle or anything. In fact, he became sort of a drunk, definitely a drunk, a trading post Indian, as, as they were called. He was an alcoholic. Um, until 1805. In 1805, everything changed when he began to have visions. Uh, some skeptics say those visions were the result of intoxication or possibly withdrawal. But be that as it may, he began to have visions. And he felt he began to have visions. And in these visions, he would be visited by, and spoken to by, the master of life or the great spirit. And the master of life told him that white people were scum, scum of the ocean, and had to be thrown back. And the only way that this could happen is if the various American Indian nations would unite and reject everything that the white people had given them. Christianity, uh, white clothing and dress style, food, you name it. Of course, he never mentioned guns. That, that's one thing I guess they were allowed to keep. But uh, everything else, all the other white uh, innovations had to be rejected. The unity part was the hard part, though. Tecumseh traveled all over, up, up and down the frontier. By some accounts, he traveled all the way into northern Canada, where there's you know, snow on the ground in summer, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. So he was all over the place, recruiting. Some people listened to him, particularly young warriors. But for the most part, people were not interested in this sort of thing. Those that were gathered here at Prophetstown, at Tippy Canoe. And it was sort of a, a remarkable place in that you had representatives, warriors from all these different American Indian nations gathered together in one place. This was supposed to be where a united front would make it stand against the Americans. Unfortunately for Tenskwatawa and Tecumseh, Tenskwatawa, known as the prophet, Tecumseh, the warrior, uh, one day while Tecumseh was gone with most of the other warriors recruiting, William Henry Harrison, future president of the United States, shows up with an army. I'm at the site of the Battle of Tippecanoe. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Tecumseh was gone with most of the warriors, and he'd warned his brother, Tenskwatawa, not to engage American soldiers without him. Well, you know, he wanted the, the Native American Confederacy to be united and as strong as possible. When William Henry Harrison showed up, with his soldiers, representatives of both met together. They agreed not to fight each other, but William Henry Harrison instructed his troops who camped around here uh, to camp fully clothed and ready. He suspected treachery on the part of the prophet. And indeed, Tenskwatawa went back, you know, in fiery oratory, spoke to his warriors. And even though they were small in number, they weren't all there, most of them were gone. 
uh, they decided to sneak up on William Henry Harrison's men and attack them here. The battle lasted two hours, but by the end, it was Tenskwatawa and his men who were running away. Uh, William Henry Harrison and his men then proceeded on to Prophetstown and burned it to the ground, razed it to the ground. Uh, this completely shattered Tenskwatawa's image uh, among those who were following him in Tecumseh as a prophet. Uh, he'd promised uh, his warriors just before the battle that he'd had another vision. And in this vision, uh, he was told by the master of life that these braves, these warriors, would have sort of superhuman protection, that American soldiers wouldn't be able to hurt them. This is actually a pretty common thing around the world. You see this when colonial peoples uh, when their lands are being moved in on and, and they're being controlled and they have to resist, often a prophet figure will emerge, promise some sort of supernatural help, uh, and, and uh, thousands, hundreds or thousands of them will end up dying. The Maji Maji revolt, uh, this has happened all over the place. As Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa discovered, just as Neolin and Pontiac before them and others had discovered, uh, really the great weakness of any Native American effort to uh, push back white settlers. The great weakness was lack of unity. These were nations that historically often hated each other, fought against each other, united in little confederacies against other confederacies, often were empire building themselves. So when the time came when unification was absolutely necessary, they just couldn't do it. And really, uh, Tecumseh's confederacy, for all his hard work and travels, was still very small compared to the population of American Indians in the region. But it was the best he could do. And as we know, it wasn't good enough.